Now, it does not look nice. Spark Street Mall. By the way, of course, the, the saga of Le Breton Flats, it's not over by any means. It's not over by any means. There was the, um, for a little while, it looked like the, uh, there was going to be a, well, there was, there was a billionaire's dick fight over it. Uh, and uh, that fell down. And now the NCC, have ta Toby Nussbaum has taken it on. They've divided it into five, five different areas. And the, 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 the new Ottawa Public Library uh, is going to go in down there. Anyway, Spark Street. Spark Street 1960 was a summer experiment in the idea of a pedestrian mall. And it was the first in North America. The first in North America. And then they tried it again each year. You're looking doubtful. No, no, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I have to keep glancing over at Ben, who knows as much about Ottawa as I do. So, um, the, um, <coughs> so, uh, so eventually in 1960s, this is 65. This is where good friends get together. I'm not sure in the city where enemies got together, but. <laughs> Parliament Hill. Parliament Hill, yeah. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. I always, I always joke and say, there's the friends of the Ottawa Public Library, but what about the enemies of the Ottawa Public <laughs> Library? Um, so in 1967, it becomes permanent. So here it is in 65. They didn't do much more to it in the next two years, and it becomes all year round. There was all sorts of schemes. Do you remember the heated um, glass awnings that ran down Rideau Street? Well, they had plans for this. They had plans for under, under heating so that we could, we could walk in, in, in the winter. <coughs> there are all sorts of various schemes. Basically, what happened was that, it, and it, unfortunately, is that it became a cult. It's now a cultural desert. You know, there used to be a jazz club down there. There used to be a cinema, the capital at the far end, where Hendrix played, etc., at the far end. And it's... It, 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 it rolls up at five. I remember playing on here. Uh, the Ottawa Musicians Union had a little stand in the middle and we would play at lunchtime uh, with amplification. And a bunch of lawyers complained that the, we were making too much noise. If that's the most, that's the most Ottawa thing I've ever heard. <laughs> they and we actually had to stop. Well, now they have, you know, they have the, um, the, the, the ribs festival, etc., etc., down there. But it's pretty well a cultural desert. Had it been a, a series of clubs down there, uh, like in Quebec City, um, you know, a whole line of clubs and things, then people would go down. Of course, it's impossible to, you know, uh, to park. Yeah, it, so you'd have to do something while well, underground parking. But gradually, the feds are buying the north side. And it's becoming federal buildings all the way, pretty well all the way down. Yeah. Sorry? Offices. More offices. More offices. <laughs> yeah, more offices. Well, the Langevin building, of course, on the end is completely full. The Langevin building was the first office building that was built for the parliament. But uh, they just keep expanding. So, so here's the, the, had the, the, the open air art displays, which they don't seem to do anymore. They, Montreal does it. They have a, a row of along a street. Do you know what I'm talking about? They have these big that big and then they, they have uh, photographs or paintings in them. Um, very, at the time, pedestrian friendly, uh, but now six o'clock, it's, y y you can fire an arrow down there, you're not gonna hit anybody. Um, and uh, and they've, uh, the, 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 uh, the RBC building that went in there, the big, <laughs> oh my God, it's, I mean, who? And, 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 and I have to say the CBC building, there's a series of them along there that just do not fit at all. This used to be the Ottawa Citizen uh, building, remember? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, they, well, they tried planting. The, the, they're having trouble with the city trees. The, the, uh, and now they're talking about bringing traffic back. On, they're talking about bringing, bringing traffic back onto it. At the moment, you can only deliver between 8 and 10 o'clock on Spark Street Mall. But I mean, 
this, this is 1965, and that's when it's at its height, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. It's been downhill. Spark Street Mall has been downhill ever since. There used to be Kimberly Stamps and the, the Hardy Arcade and all that sort of thing. But it, yeah, and get, just get some culture down there if you want to rescue it. This is the, um, the other thing that Grebert, as I said, wanted was that he wanted to get the trains out of downtown. So they, had a, they, they struck a committee, and, the, and so the question before the committee was, where can we put the train station so that it's inconvenient for everybody <laughs> to get to? That's a good question. And they came up where, it, where exactly where it is, exactly where it is. So this is, this is it under construction. It's actually won some architectural, architectural awards. It's listed as one of the uh, buildings of merit with the Architectural Society of Canada. I'm not too sure, <laughs> but the, the Union Station, as, you know, as opposed to having a train downtown, now uh, off we all go out there, um, for which Blue Line are eternally grateful. <laughs> That's the Queen. 1957, and th she's, there's a little electric button which is still, I think the Bytown Museum have it. She's pushing an electric button. That's the beginning of the construction of the Queensway. Oh. There was an explosion. She actually jumped, apparently, according to the <laughs> Ottawa <laughs> Journal. She pressed the button and went, what was that? And turned around. And there was this, there was this explosion take. That's the beginning of the Queensway. Again, one of Gribert's ideas that there be a cross town um, for, the, for the car. As I said, the car is, has done so much to the uh, external landscape, and we're only just sort of really grappling with it, with it now. But so this is the opening of the Queensway, which ran along the old railway tracks for the most part. It ran along the old railway tracks, but a lot of descent to it, particularly Ottawa East, which was now cut off, essentially by the Queensway. There was an old town hall. There's an old town hall down in uh, Ottawa East. It was a separate separate area unto itself, like Rockcliffe. And they had their own little town hall. And essentially, it was the Queensway cut it off, and it took a, quite a while to recover. Did you think the Queensway should have went around at that time, or do you think that, do you think, how do you see that, the way that's running through? Well, you would have had, like, a, like the English have, maybe a, a, a peripatetic. Originally, Grebert's plan was that it be a boulevard down on ground level with a with, uh, garden down the middle and then all it, a bit like Byron is now actually if you can imagine Byron being but um, I mean he's dealing with uh, he's dealing with a population of 100, uh, 150,000 in 1950 w there was a big annexation like the one in 2000 Ottawa tripled in size um, so there's a lot more people now Starting to come downtown after the annexation, and you've got the rise of the, of the, uh, of, of um, Hull, of all the government buildings being, you know, destroy the waterfront in Hull and then put all the the Chaudière, Terrasse de la Chaudière, etc., uh, which was Trudeau's uh, nod to bilingualism, in a sense. But uh, so this is the beginning of the, of the the Queen's Way. The other plan that Grebert had um, was to have a green belt, like a scarf almost, around Ottawa. And then you would have satellite towns, which is Barhaven and Blackburn Hamlet. Yes, that you would have these satellite towns, but they would have their own industry and their own um, offices, etc. And there would be government offices there, which didn't happen, of course. So. If you're on Greenfield in the morning, you know, it's bumper to bumper to get downtown to Ottawa. I think working from home is going to cure this. I think that they are going to become satellite towns because everybody won't have to leave town mm -hmm. to go to work. I think it's the best thing that's happened to work is the ability to work from home. I mean, of course, I've been doing it for 30 years, but so I'm, I'm right behind it. But um, you're in the middle of striking for it, aren't you? 
sorry to point you out, but you're in the middle. Of, and I, very much so. And I, I, th I mean, th of course, they're nervous that downtown Ottawa is going to start to diminish. But um, you've got a lot of buildings that can be turned into affordable housing, which they've done. Yeah. All those office buildings. Yeah. There's 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 uh, there's high rises in Vancouver that have a nunnery on the seventh floor. <laughs> you know, you you you've got to think differently. You know. Yeah. So the green belt uh, is gradually continuing to be under threat um, with the developers, as I said, this, you're looking at flat land, so um, hopefully we can hold out with it um, because that's where actually where the city breathes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what I mean? That's, that's, that's where the city breathes. There's Marion, there's Marion. She's my favorite m mayor, yeah. She, uh, you can see, died in 2000, 2008. But uh, first thing she did, six months after she, she was a nurse. First thing she did after she got in, see, compassion drove her e every, every action. First thing she did was that she had a conference on homosexuality, a world, a global conference on sexuality here after six months. Then she, they, then they were saying, Who's going to take the vote people? The Vietnamese vote people? And she said right away, we'll take 4,000. And the city did it within, I mean, if you look now with the Ukraines or getting them out of uh, Sudan, within four months, all 4,000 of them were here. It was a huge coordinated effort. So it's, it's an interesting contrast. Uh, we've had three, three women mayors. They're, they're Charlotte, uh, Jacqueline Holtzman, who billed herself as a friend of business. Uh, the only remaining evidence of, 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 of Jacqueline uh, is that white tower that's at the back of what used to be City Hall. Yeah, it was supposed to have, there was supposed to be an elevator went up it and then you could have a view from there. And she raised the money for it. And then after uh, they realized they needed a lot more money to do it. So now it just sits there. It's Holtzman's folly, as I call it. Yeah, but I think I, I would I would label Marion as the best mayor we've ever had. Yeah, because in the end, oh, it's the duty of government to administer compassion and govern greed. It is the duty of government. Put that on my tombstone. It's the only <laughs> the only intelligent thing I ever really said. It is the duty of government to administer compassion and govern greed. And this woman, I spoke to Marion about this. Marion understood what I'm talking about. That's how you judge a city, by the size of its heart, not by the size of its economy. Agreed? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if re-elected. <laughs> okay. That is Metcalf looking north in the 1920s. That is Metcalf looking north in the 1920s. That's from exactly the same position from Somerset. That's a huge ch look at that. Yeah. Yes, I'm going, yeah, I want to, yeah. From exactly the same spot in the corner of Somerset. Now, I'm not going to, we're not going <coughs> to, we're not going to get too much into it, but is that progress or is that regression? Yeah. yeah. So we've looked at all those plans that they had for Ottawa, but the, there hasn't been a real, like I say, can we please have a mayor who's a, a, um, a town planner, can we please have one? Because th those guys have a sense of vision. And what I want to show you is, it, it, it's sort of in the contrast between these two. D do people know who Jane Jacobs was? Yeah. Yeah. Jane Jacobs was an American from Greenwich Village who came up to Toronto and she was a defender of cities as, well, she judged them by their walk ability. It's one of the concepts I, I want to really get down in these talks. 
she did it, it, for instance um eccentric eccentricity in the architecture um the ability to walk at night and feel safe um, the provision of benches the provision provision of small parks place where the city could gather right now because in the end a city is a reflection of two things it's good ideas and it's bad ideas right and Jane I believe had a lot of good ideas the only place really places left that I can think of that have that kind of walkability is Hindenburg the glebe is gradually forgive me the, gre the glebe is gradually losing it you know as soon as they soon as that soon as as soon as lands now I'm not gonna I, I know you don't want me to, but the, uh, I, as soon as Lansdowne, the pl plans for Lansdowne, what it, now they're talking about putting even more yeah. condos in there. But they, they are, as soon as that went in, it, 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 th buildings like that and, and con 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 conflagrations like that, they suck the soul out of an area. You know, they suck the soul out of an area. Well, Hintonburg seems to be holding on to it. If I was going to go for a walk, and then, of course, the place of public art. She was very keen on the place of public art. Um, and I, there's always an argument as to whether people like it or not. But I tell you, it being there is way better than it not being there. And the idea of street corners. The Glebe has a couple where there are two or three benches. And the, and the, the, the thing. This is all part of walkability that she had. And small stores. Sm small stores, you know which we were promised at Lansdowne That's Park. Great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But, but so <coughs> if, if, if you go back and read The Fall and Decline of, of North American, the death and life of North American cities. Is it the other way around? The life and death of North American. Yeah. Death and life. Death and life, thank you, of North American cities. There's, I mean, in the, the, the a part of the purpose of me doing these lectures and having them in posterity is that s future Ottawa citizens, maybe a hundred years now or, or so, are going to know, you know, geez, that guy <laughs> had some pretty good ideas as to how a city should grow. But um, anyway, so I, if I just once again, I think that's regressive. Yeah. There she is. There's Madame Ahern. And she went from, we went from that, 1899, to that, 1999. In 100 years, we went from that to that. And it's this thing that has, is designing has has for those hundred years designed the way Ottawa grows you know the more roads you build the more cars there are on them yeah and there's there's our new city hall uh, Moriyama de designed it the same fellow that designed the war museum <coughs> Uh, and right next to it is what I call Fort Court. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's got a little chimney at the top, and when somebody uh, neg neglects to pay their parking fines, there's a little puff of black smoke comes out. <laughs> <on it. laughs> and then in front of it, on the other side, of course, Confederation Square. Thank God for Confederation mm -hmm. Park. Thank God for where the Jazz Festival is. Yeah. Thank God for that. Um, the uh, so this is this is this is now from where from whence the city is run. It's our it's our fourth city hall. Um, I actually quite like the interior of it. Uh, once you're inside, it's yeah. I've been to a lot of functions there. It works. This place, it works. I remember one one day standing here um, protesting. Um, that we wanted to shut libraries. Do you remember that? There, were, yeah. there was some talk of wanting to shut libraries. So we were, we were campaigning out, outside City Hall. And then, of course, there's the Rink of Dreams, yeah. out, which is great. It is 
it's a copy of Toronto, of course, but, but um, anyway, there we are. And there we are, we hit a million. We hit a million. I think it was in 2017, I think we hit a million. We've gone from that, that, that setting and the, uh, the, per the person that I introduced you to, the Pierre-Louis Constant Penancy, the native that had his trap lines there. We've gone from him and his family to a million. The, the future of Ottawa. Um, as I say, my solution is that, 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 that um, we employ the, the I, we saw those series with Todd and Bennett and Cochon and, and Grebert. I think it's time for another one. I think it's time for another plan, a vision for Ottawa. Um, we're, we're dragging our feet. Uh, we do have some sort of climate change policy, but um, for instance, I, I, I begged them to put a park on the top of the Rideau Centre, mm. well, which if you go up there, there's a few trees and a couple of benches, is to start having garden roofs. I want downtown, I want a community, th they're breaking out all over the place, and I hope it continues, are community gardens. Mm -hmm. There's one near Bronson, uh, on Bronson there, just up, from, just up the hill. A lot more of that. Um, I, th I think we're going to see a lot of organic farms opening around, around the city. Uh, um, as for the continued, I think, and the one thing that I think is really going to change it, as I say, is this business of working from home. This business of working from home. The, the policy for the last 20, 30 years has been infill. So I'd like to finish with this poem by my friend Albert the poet laureate of Ottawa. With the skin on the soles of our feet, we gently touch the sacred surface of Ajikojiwan. The spirit of the island rises from the rock like a bird, soaring into the blood of our hearts. We raise our hands into the sky, the, scar the stars descend to caress our palms. We open our eyes, and search the universe at peace, looking for the face of the great mystery. We listen to the Kitchizibi of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg, the Ottawa River. She has followed the path created for her by Mino Manido, guiding her to sacred Ajikojiwan, where the mighty voice of water reminds all peoples that without water, all life of this world will perish. The moon illuminates the island. She speaks to us of her love for water. The fire we kindle in our hearts hears her message, his flames rising ever higher. Over circle dances, the rapids sing. The smoke of burning sage carries our chanting song to the eternal home of our grandmothers and our grandfathers. The waters of the falls swallow our humble offerings of tobacco, we call upon the good spirit to bless all the people of this nation. Let us always be kind to one another, we say, and honor all things created, provided to humankind, so our children can live joyful lives. We stand with kindness in our hearts on a sacred island where the circle is always strong, where our instructions as human beings rise encircled in the mist of Ajikojuan. They call loudly, wanting to be reclaimed, to assure the survival of all our relations, of all our descendants to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. miss an episode? Then go to rogerstv.com and watch The History of Ottawa According to Phil Jenkins online anytime. Thanks for watching.